Might sound a little bit like Groundhog Day here. I'm talking about Kyle Dawkins, talking with Kyle Dawkins, I should say, about a fight against Roman Delize, this time at UFC Fight Night, June 18th in Austin. Kyle, how's it going, man? Doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's uh, always good to talk to you. I was kind of joking off the top there. You were supposed to fight the Leeds A before. They've rebooked yeah. the fight to June 18th. Um, you know, do you have the worst luck in MMA? What's going on here, man? <laughs> nah, I don't think so. I mean, I probably have like, the worst start of the first couple of fights in the UFC. But as far as, uh, you know, 2022 started off, it's pretty good. So I'm looking forward to June 18th. Yeah, no, no, for sure. I was kind of joking just because of the Holland thing, and then you know all the all these uh, fights kind of getting rebooked and all that. But uh, why why was this uh, rebooked so late? Do you know why? Because obviously the fight was supposed to take place a few months ago. Uh, I'm not sure. I know that we we were scheduled to fight when he filled in for Holland, um, and then he tested positive for COVID, so we weren't really sure what um, the next move was as far as like opponents and stuff. Um, we were expecting uh, the Marquez rematch uh, after. Wait, was it the Marquez rematch? No, no, no. I'm sorry. We were expecting, I think, the Holland rematch, probably February. Um, but something that happened, he dropped down to 70. So so we weren't sure what was going on. And then they offered me Julian. Um, then that whole thing with him, he fell off. And then after my last fight against Pickett, um, we expected the Julian rematch to happen. Uh, but they kind of really never responded with that, offered me Roman. And, of course, I said yes. So here we are. Other than Julian, was there anyone else in the mix? Or was it always Roman was, was the fight? Um, they had asked me a short notice. They asked me like one or two short notice fights at the time against uh, a Russian fighter. I forget who it was, but it was like a week or so notice, and I was I'm not a, I'm not a fan of taking that and, or making weight on a week's notice either. So. Yeah. You got to be smart with your career, right? Like, I mean, yeah. you know, it's one thing to, you know, I'll, I'll fight anyone anytime, but I mean, you rack up a couple losses and all of a sudden you're not in the UFC anymore. So, you know, how important is that to just, you know, have a good team around you that's going to make those decisions? Because some people don't. Yeah, I mean, obviously, my my manager calls me and asks me, and he gives me his you know two cent on the on the uh, kind of the situation at hand. Um, I go to my coaches, I go to my my coach Will Martinez, and my brother, kind of you know discuss everything with them, see what they think about it, and then kind of just you know base my prediction off of that or decision off of that. Um, if it's like two to one, no to yes, then I'll just say no. Um, but a majority of the time, it's not the opponents that we say no to. It's just like the dates, like either the date can't work out based off of, you know, fighters or cornermen not being able to be there or, you know, we have something else going on. So now that you've had this extra time to look at Delizze as an opponent, uh, how are you looking at this one from a style perspective? You got even extra time to do your homework. Yeah, I think he's got a great style. Um, he's he, from from the videos I've seen, um, although he's not very active, really. He's fought, I think, like a year apart, I believe, or something like that. Um, and he fought, I think, like a year and a half ago, maybe, or like, I think, mm-hmm. I think his last fight was a, was a while ago. Yeah, um, layoff. Yeah, but for yeah, sure. yeah, but yeah, he's he's you know he's a very good fighter. Um, he's very basic, but what he does with his basics are very good. And those are dangerous guys that you have to compete against. The guys who are you know good at the basics. Um, he's also a, a heavy leg lock guy, so it's another thing you have to be worried about, obviously. But I'm not going into the cage, you know, too worried about him. I'm worried about just making him worry about me. Um, but I think it's a great matchup. I think I come out with my hand raised as always and uh, very confident, very healthy. Uh, my body's great and I, and, I, and I really feel great for this camp. So That's awesome. Uh, training camp, I know you always work with your brother. I imagine you've been working with him a bit because he obviously he's had, he's had a t- one of the toughest runs at heavyweight. He had to go from Derek Lewis, what was it, Lewis to Curtis Blades. Uh, so I imagine he's been back in the gym now because that fight was a while ago. Yeah, took a little bit of time off, let his body heal. Um, he had a lot of bumps and bruises after that Blades fight. His leg looked swelled up or something from the leg kicks or whatnot. Um, but yeah, you know, he's been back in the gym uh, grinding, you know, obviously being my training partner as always. But we have a bunch of other guys that I've been training with, a lot of other heavyweights in the gym that uh, I'm using. Um, but a lot of, we don't have a lot of like middleweights or light heavyweights. It's either, you know, a lightweight or a heavyweight. So I'm stuck with the heavyweights for now. Okay, well, that's, I mean, in some ways, you're fighting guys that are, you know, potentially going to be stronger than who you're in the cage with, right? If they're fighting a heavyweight, so. Yeah, so I'm used to, you know, super strong guys, you know, training wise. So when I get in the cage, fighting in the middleweight isn't that that difficult. Yeah, and, and something I think you and I have talked about, I've probably talked with Chris about it too, like, sounds like a lot of up and comers as well. So guys that are still proving themselves, how, how crucial is that in camp just to have guys that are, you know, going to give you that extra push? Because there's no egos, right? They haven't made it yet, so, so to speak. So they want to sort of, you know, help you out. Yeah, you know, they're always, everybody's always responsible as well. Like, they're not trying to hurt each other. We're not trying to go, you know, balls to the wall. It's not a big camp that I'm in where I have other middleweights that are trying to prove a point, like you said. Um, so I think it's another plus, you know, for um, uh, like a fight camp aspect um, because the guys, you know, we're all respectful of each other. We all don't want to kill each other. And we all know that we're just trying to make each other better. And we're not here to, you know, injure each other or have too big of an ego in the gym. Um, obviously, the ego gets 
gets to you here and there uh, amongst guys. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're all shaking hands and it's, it's a good practice afterwards. Any, any thought of doing any cross training? Obviously not for this camp because, uh, you know, you have the fight coming up, what, in a couple of weeks. But, um, yeah. you know, there's a few gyms because you were talking about needing middleweight bodies. Has there been any thoughts of, you know, maybe going over to like a Sanford MMA? It seems like all the middleweights are there. I don't know. It's, it's crazy. I mean, there's always a thought uh, of doing that. But I'm not a guy who's, you know, big on thinking I need middleweights or need, you know, I need this guy or I need, I need guys my size to train with. Um, I think that, you know, quantity over, obviously, obviously quality of fighters are great, but, um, the guys that we have all respect, you know, us and they understand our, 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 uh, goals. So they're here to help, um, regardless of belt, regardless of amateur or pro and whatnot. So, um, I think it's better for, from the situation that we have at my gym, because at a place like Sanford or a place like TriStar and stuff like that, you are beating the crap out of each other every single day because you're all, you know, trying to prove a point. Places like that, I feel like it's a lot of ego and, and guys try to get the better of each other every single day. And, and that kind of leads to injuries and leads to, you know, just bad times at the gym. And that's yeah. not something. And, and you know, actually, you bring, up, you, you bring up a great point, though, too, because, yeah. again, at your gym, everything's customized towards you. If you went over to, say, one of those bigger camps, is that going to be the case? Right. You don't know. So, I um, mean, there's definitely pros and cons, but that, that's an interesting yeah. perspective. Yeah, I would just be like another guy at the gym. Like I would just be another another guy there that 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 is just training along with with other guys, and they would just see me as kind of like a paycheck in a way because they would be coming out. I have to give them a certain percentage of my pay and all that stuff, and it's just not the way that my brother and I want to train. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, like to keep sure. it loyal with our, with our guys. So keep keep the money in the family, right? So there you go. It's all good. Um, how about the weight cut? Uh, has that has that process started yet? Uh, as far as getting down to eighty five. I mean, obviously, I've, I've been dieting for a while. Um, I was a little heavier this camp than unusual, um, but you know the weight just kind of comes off, so it's really easy for me to for me to lose the weight. So, you know, as of now, I've, I'm looking great. Um, nothing to worry about. I'm working with uh, John Poppy as always. So, oh, he's oh always, yeah, that's right, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's a bit of a guru. I have, I have coming out um, to the fight, so I look forward to kind of working with him as always because he always makes great food and always makes fight week a lot easier on the weight cut. So. That's great, man. Um, so you mentioned him, uh, Chris. Chris, your brother, I'm assuming, will be in your corner, and Will Martinez, who, who's going to be in yeah. the cage. Yeah, Chris, Will, and uh, my other buddy uh, Jim, who helps out. He's a he's a black belt now. He just got his black belt. Uh, when actually, was it when I was fighting Hound or was I fighting Pickett? I forget who it was, but we gave him his black belt when we were there at the at the uh, at the PI. We were training one day, and my coach was talking about it prior, so he got his black belt at the at the UFC Performance Institute. So something you can always look back on and be happy about. But yeah, he's he'll be there with me as well. Uh, more of a jujitsu guy, so it's good. It's a good look for Roman. How's this fight playing out on June 18th? I'll get my hand raised. I'm going to go in there, go forward at him. You know, I know that he's kind of lackadaisical in his approach and and very slow, but I have to keep a high pace and just put it on him from the very beginning and uh, come out with the finish, hopefully, if early, if not later. As far as uh, this fight, uh, I imagine the plan is to keep active. I know I ask you this a lot just because of the you know circumstances. It seems that it happens yeah. every fight. But is that kind of what you're thinking? Not looking past June 18th, but just you know maybe get a fight or two in uh, for the rest of the year. Is it kind of what you're looking at? Yeah, I mean, hopefully it's always good to stay active and just uh, yeah, just stay active, stay in the gym. As long as I don't you know go come out of this fight you know with too many scratches or bumps and bruises, then I'm looking forward to to getting in there again as soon as possible. But right now, my I'm zoned in on June 18th. Correct me if I'm wrong. Last interview we did, uh, did you not recently buy a house or something, or you got you got a bunch of new stuff going on as far as uh, in, in a all lot? That? Yeah, yeah we, we bought a house uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. We bought a house and we just got married actually April 28th of uh, this year. So we just got married. So yeah. Okay, gotcha. That makes sense. So what's downtime looking like? Again, I know you've probably gotten a bunch <laughs> of stuff going on. Uh, te TV, video games. What, what have you been up to? Uh, just playing Call of Duty, the usual. Watching TV. Nothing really like. Nothing on Netflix or anything like that. Nothing big. Nothing seems like it's out anymore. But uh, yeah, hanging out with my dog, hanging out with my wife now. And it's just, it's good. You know, the, the married life now is good. So good to hear. That's awesome. Um, do you play Call of Duty with any of your teammates? Like, does Chris play at all or no? Uh, no, my brother's more of an Elden Ring nerd. So <laughs> no, no. I, I, wow, I, shots fired. You just called your brother a nerd. So yeah. Right. Uh, I play with a couple of my buddies. My buddy Corey I play with and I'm a buddy Andrew I play with. But it's just none of the guys at the gym really play. So. I just kind of play with my, you know, my friends outside of the gym. How, how much is that time needed to get that little break of monotony? Because I know, listen, you love training, you like competing, you like fighting, but to get that little bit of an escape, like how, how crucial is that during camp? I think it's always crucial. I think that the closer that you get to the fight, the more you can kind of not worry about it is, is always good. So 
when I'm not training, I'm always doing something else, whether it be, you know, outside doing lawn work or, you know, in here playing video games or kind of just upstairs hanging out with my wife. Um, I just kind of try to keep my mind off the fight as, as much as possible, just because I don't want to get worked up, you know, during during the week for no apparent reason. I have to save my energy for training and then save all that mental, um, those mental reps for a fight week. And making time for interviews, Kyle. Really appreciate the time, man. We're looking forward to it. UFC Fight Night, June 18th in Austin, Texas. Um, yeah. If there's anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, just everybody as usual is always great. Uh, everybody at the gym, I'm very thankful for all my training partners. And uh, Performance Meal Prep is a company that I've been using for my weight cut. Um, yeah, if you will hunt, <clears throat> we have a... a we just add actually added new rash guards to Fuel Hunt. So we have like lightning bolts and stuff. It's pretty sweet. So you can go over there, check out fuelhunt.com. Uh, uh, a couple other fighters uh, locally from Philly um, actually have rash guards with them too. So go out, support the local fighters. And uh, I'm just thankful for everybody again.